Queen of Physics, How Wu Xin Cheng Helped Unlock the Secrets of the Atom. This book is written by Teresa Robeson and illustrated by Rebecca Hoang. Teresa Robeson is the author. She was born in Hong Kong, raised in Canada, now lives in Indiana. And Rebecca Hoang is the illustrator. She's from Taiwan and currently lives in San Francisco. In this story, they're going to talk about the Nobel Prize for Physics. And the Nobel Prize is awarded in the country of Sweden, and it is given for many science and technology um, advances. And so there's a picture of what the award looks like. In China, in the small town of Lihu, the Wu family celebrated the birth of a child. The child was a girl. A girl. What would become of her? In those days, girls were not sent to school, not considered as smart as boys, and certainly not encouraged to be scientists. But Mama and Baba Wu did not feel that way. They believed girls should go to school and could become anything they wanted to be. They knew their daughter could be smart and brave and that she would make a difference in the world. Baba named her Sheng Sheng, which means courageous hero. Even before Wu Sheng Sheng arrived in the world, Baba had quit his job as an engineer and opened a school just for girls. Mama wore out her shoes trudging to every house in Lihu to urge families to educate their daughters. So when Sheng Sheng was ready, a school was waiting for her. Baba was the principal and Mama was the teacher, teaching little girls to read and write and count. Baba and Mama were courageous too, as they showed their daughter the way. Soon enough, Xing Sheng had learned everything she could from her parents' school. She knew how to count and to add, subtract, multiply, divide. She knew how to read and write hundreds of Chinese words with their strong dots and angled lines and wispy tails. Sheng Sheng was ready for more. But in the 1920s, the next closest girls' school was in the city of Suzhou, 50 long miles of bumpy, dusty country roads away. She would have to live there, far from her family, and could only go home for winter and summer vacations. Mama wept, Baba worried, but they knew their daughter had to brave the world to grow. Shen Sheng knew it too, so off she went. The school offered two programs, teacher training and academic. Shen Sheng picked the free teacher training program, but she peeked into the academic program textbooks and saw that they covered so much more. Science wasn't just science, it was biology and chemistry and physics, all connected by the lovely language of mathematics. And oh, physics, physics, the study of the very matter and energy around her, the study of things that could be seen or felt, heat, sound, light, electricity, and motion, and of things too minuscule to be seen or felt, atoms, and even tinier parts of atoms. Physics captured her heart. During the day, Shen Sheng attended her own classes. At night, she studied the academic textbooks she borrowed from friends. She called it self-learning. It was a habit she would keep up for the rest of her life. Her classmates noticed that Shen Sheng worked extra hard and was not afraid of challenges. They asked her to be their leader in their underground group to fight against the government. Citizens were not allowed to say what they wanted. If they, were, if they supported the wrong political party or said the wrong thing or happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, they could be punished, perhaps even killed, by the government, by the warlords, by rich and powerful foreigners who lived there. The students wanted someone brave to lead them. They asked Xin Sheng, 
What would she do? What could she do? Baba had named her courageous hero. She would live up to her name. With her day full of classes, homework, secret studying on her own, and leading student protests and strikes, Sheng Sheng had little time to miss her family. The years flew by. Now 17 years old, she graduated with top grades. It would have been easy to go home, but she took the harder path and traveled to Nanjing, three times farther from home than she had ever gone before, to attend the National Central University, where she immersed herself in her favorite subject, physics. Once again, her hard work and determination made her a leader among the students. Wu Xing Sheng led the march to General Sheng Kai Chek's headquarters, where she and her classmates urged his government to resist Japanese invaders just before the start of World War II. Like a seed that must fly far to flourish, Sheng Sheng set forth once more in 1936, this time to Berkeley, California, thousands of miles across the ocean. She was going to continue studying the physics of atoms. Scientists understood atoms, but not completely. If people knew how atoms split, they could use them in new inventions and technologies. Maybe even help doctors treat sick people. She focused on beta decay, where a nucleon inside an atom broke into an opposite nucleon, an electron or positron, and a neutrino. It was like opening one present and getting three different gifts inside. After California, Shen Shang went to Columbia University in New York, where she continued to explore beta decay. She was careful. She was precise. She conducted experiment after experiment until she had a deeper understanding of beta decay than just about anyone else. Her reputation grew and physicists who couldn't solve their own problems came to her for help. Scientist Enrico Fermi said that electrons should have had faster speeds when they burst out of the neutron during beta decay. He couldn't prove it, nobody could. But Shin Chung could, because she understood beta decay so well, she knew what to look for. Because she was such a careful researcher, she was able to run a difficult experiment that proved Fermi right. Many people thought that Shin Chung should have won the Nobel Prize for this work, but she did not receive it. When two physicists, Yang Sheng Ning and Li Sung Dao, questioned something many scientists believed, that nature did not distinguish between right and left, a concept of symmetry called parity, they asked Sheng Sheng to investigate. Because she had worked on parity in beta decay, she knew just what to do. To focus on the project, she even canceled a trip to China a rare chance to see her parents for the first time since she had left home for the United States. Her hard work paid off. Her results proved them right. For this, Yang and Li, but not Sheng Sheng, won a Nobel Prize. Another two physicists, Richard Feynman and Marie Gell-Mann, asked her to check their hypothesis about a special expression of beta decay. In her usual thorough way, Sheng Sheng ran experiments and confirmed their idea. Many scientists praised her for this important finding. Yet, for the third time, she did not get the Nobel Prize. Sometimes Sheng Sheng did not get the job she wanted either, because she was a woman, because she was Asian. Was she sad? Yes. Was she disappointed? Often. Was she discouraged? occasionally. But she did not let those feelings stop her from doing what she loved because Baba always said, ignore the obstacles, just put your head down and keep walking forward. There was only one obstacle she could not overcome. Because of World War II, the political unrest in China afterward, and her focus on her work, 
Sheng Sheng was not able to return to see her parents before they died. My heart was breaking, she wrote to a friend, when she could not attend Baba's funeral. Still in her new home in the United States, Sheng Sheng continued on her courageous path. She fought prejudice against women and Asians and became such an exceptional physicist that the Smithsonian Magazine called her the first lady of physics research, and Newsweek declared her the queen of physics. And that is how a small girl from a faraway village in China went to school, proved herself as smart as any boy, learned to be a scientist, and even became a queen, the queen of physics. Wu Sheng Sheng did a lot of amazing things that you can read about at the end of this book. And it's no wonder she was put on the cover of this magazine. She died on February 16, 1997 in New York City.